Under the superimposition of many factors, the global semiconductor industry is also facing new changes, and Southeast Asia has become the focus of changes. Although the semiconductor industry in Southeast Asia has always been at the low end of the industry chain, it plays a vital role in the division of labor in the global chip industry chain. According to statistics, the chip market size of Southeast Asian countries was about $27 billion US dollars in 2020, and it is expected to reach about $41.1 billion US dollars in 2028. From the 2018 US ZTE Huawei incident that triggered sanctions against China, to the US Chip Act, that set off a wave of competition in the development of the global chip industry, and then in January this year, the new agreement between the United States, the Netherlands and Japan once again expanded chip export control measures to China. A series of fluctuations has accelerated semiconductor factories seeking Chinese alternatives in Southeast Asia to fill the supply gap caused by the United States' attempt to separate mainland China from the chip market. In other words, countries such as Singapore, Malaysia, Vietnam, Thailand, the Philippines, and India are benefiting greatly from the global reordering of the semiconductor industry. And their rise has also made China's semiconductor industry more dangerous. So, what impact will global semiconductor giants going to Southeast Asia have on China? Among these Southeast Asian countries, who can take the lead in the field of semiconductors? Okay, that and more is exactly what we are going to talk about. Let's get started. Applied Materials, LAM Group and CLA Corporation together control about 35% of the global semiconductor equipment market. Since the US government introduced sweeping export control, measures to restrict China's access to equipment and manpower for making advanced chips, the three companies have begun to transfer non-Chinese employees from China to Singapore and Malaysia, or to increase production capacity in Southeast Asia. Export controls have reduced the business of American companies in China and are also a key factor in their industrial transfer. According to Semi Data, China once accounted for nearly 30% of the revenue of U.S. chip equipment manufacturers, but in the latest quarterly results, applied materials dropped to 20%, Panlin 24%, and Calais 23%. In addition, semiconductor manufacturers such as Samsung, Intel, Global Foundries, and UMC all have factories in Southeast Asia and plan to further expand there. In a nutshell, with changes in the international geopolitical structure and industrial environment, Southeast Asia is becoming a treasure place for chip giants to bet on. The Singapore government recognized the core importance of the semiconductor industry as a high-tech manufacturing industry, and the backbone of the entire electronics industry earlier than other countries. With tax incentives, a professional regulatory framework, and a sound intellectual property system, combined with a relatively large number of well-educated workers and engineers, Singapore has attracted many multinational companies. In 2020, the proportion of the output value of Singapore's semiconductor industry increased to 46.3%. In just a few years, Singapore's semiconductor industry has grown significantly. In the subsequent development process, industry manufacturers have relocked their attention to Singapore. Singapore is home to Micron's global headquarters, three memory fabs, and an assembly and testing facility. It is also home to Infineon's Asia Pacific headquarters. Most importantly, Singapore has a complete industrial chain. According to data, Singapore currently has 40 IC design companies, 14 silicon wafer factories, 8 wafer factories. 20 packaging and testing companies, and some related companies responsible for materials, manufacturing equipment, photo masks and other industries. Malaysia plays an important role in the packaging and testing links in the semiconductor industry chain. Southeast Asia accounts for 27% of the global packaging and testing market, of which Malaysia alone accounts for half. Among them, Penang, Malaysia is known as the Silicon Valley of the East. With a history of more than 50 years of electrical and electronic industry development, it has become a leading electronics industry center in Malaysia. According to Semi Data, Penang, Malaysia accounts for about 8% of the back-end production of the global semiconductor industry, becoming the world's leading microelectronics assembly, 
packaging and testing area. According to statistics, about 50 multinational semiconductor companies in Malaysia have set up packaging and testing factories in the local area, including Micron, ST, Infineon, Texas Instruments, etc. Malaysia's semiconductor industry is striving to gradually develop from cheap foundry to design and manufacturing. At present, under the support of a group of international semiconductor giants, Vietnam's semiconductor industry is developing rapidly at all stages of the supply chain. Up to now, Vietnam's semiconductor industry is still dominated by packaging and testing, and the gradual transfer of the generally low-profit packaging and testing industry out of China has also given them opportunities. Vietnam's semiconductor market is expected to grow by 1.65 billion US dollars from 2020 to 20. 25, an annual growth rate of 6.52%. Vietnam also has one of the most open economies in the world, with 15 free trade agreements. Recently, Vietnam cancelled 31 tariff lines on South Korean electronics and components, which also prompted South Korean semiconductor giant Samsung to build factories in Vietnam. Although the current semiconductor industry chain in Vietnam is relatively weak, Vietnam has the convenient geographical advantage of being bordered by China as well as the industrial chain that has been formed by Japanese and South Korean automakers setting up factories in the local area. In addition, Vietnam has a lot of cheap labor and land, and the Vietnamese government is also participating in the global competition for tax incentives. However, Vietnam does not have enough educated workers, and Vietnam's bureaucracy is often cumbersome and unpredictable. In addition to the above-mentioned Southeast Asian countries, India has recently disclosed its chip ambitions to the outside world from time to time, saying that semiconductor manufacturers face geopolitical concerns and natural disaster risks in Asia, and India will become an alternative destination. India has great advantages in designing chips, and Bangalore in India is one of the largest chip design centers in the world. But this also makes many people question, is there a semiconductor manufacturing industry in India? Because compared with other Southeast Asian countries, India's semiconductor performance is not outstanding. Data shows that in 2020, India imported $10.4 billion in hardware and software, while technology exports were only $300 million. In the past two years, the epidemic has swept the world and caused semiconductor supply disruptions, and the chip shortage in India is particularly prominent. The Indian government has realized that it is not reliable to rely entirely on global supply chains in key areas such as semiconductor chips, limited financial support, and insufficient manufacturing capacity will seriously restrict the development of the country's semiconductor industry. In 2022, the Indian government announced that it intends to invest 760 billion rupees to create a production incentive plan, which will provide a globally competitive incentive plan for the semiconductor, display manufacturing and design industries, and create a new era of Indian electronics manufacturing. At present, some companies choose to invest in India. Applied Materials, a major semiconductor equipment manufacturer in the United States, invested 50 million US dollars to establish a research and development facility in Bangalore, Vedanta. A manufacturing group has reached an agreement totaling 19.4 billion US dollars to build a fab in India, which is expected to begin operations in 2024. Recently, US Secretary of Commerce Raimondo bluntly stated in an interview that the United States is considering advancing cooperation with India in chip manufacturing. She revealed that she is expected to visit India with a number of CEOs of American companies in March to discuss related issues. The Indian semiconductor market, worth $27.2 billion in 2021, is expected to more than double to $64 billion by 2026, according to the Electronics and Semiconductor Association of India. In general, Southeast Asia is becoming one of the winners in the development of the global semiconductor industry. Under the current industrial environment and situation, the semiconductor ecosystem in Southeast Asia and India has great growth potential. However, many countries in Southeast Asia and India still have many difficulties in realizing the process of shifting from OEM production to technology center. At this stage, Southeast Asia is highly dependent on foreign companies, 
and the way to develop the semiconductor industry is relatively simple. It is mainly engaged in labor-intensive businesses such as packaging and testing that are at the bottom of the industrial chain. From the perspective of industry, labor cost advantage is the main factor to attract foreign investment. And this is likely to be a key factor hindering the further development of the semiconductor industry in Southeast Asia. Although Southeast Asian countries are actively investing in the development of the semiconductor industry, it is not enough to disturb the global market structure in the short term, and the construction of the integrity of the industrial chain, talent education, infrastructure and systems needs to be further improved and strengthened. Well, all in all, it is undeniable that the transfer of foreign capital in the semiconductor industry has a certain impact on China, which may increase the pressure on employment and capital outflows. Then, how China responds to the various impacts and challenges brought about by the subsequent industrial transfer becomes crucial. Well, thanks for your listening, and please be free to put your comments below and share your insightful ideas. Thank you so much for your continuous support. Your precious time with us is highly appreciated. See you.